Hey everyone, and welcome to this XM tutorial. Today, I want to show you how to find the best XM mouse sensitivity for yourself. This method can be done in any game and takes around 10 to 20 minutes depending on how fast you are. Since my microphone has an annoying random crackling, I will use a voice to speech software for now until I found its cause. If you dislike this approach, or the voice is difficult to understand please let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you like this tutorial, give it a like or maybe even hit that subscribe button as I will probably do more tutorial videos on other topics such as what does the ballistic curve do and how to make use out of it. So if there is something you would like to see just post your suggestions below the video and I will check them out. Finding the mouse sensitivity that you play the best with, is not as easy as you might think. Usually players tend to use sensitivities that are way faster than what they can actually handle. They want to be able to turn around very quickly, or in general, they want to aim by mainly using their wrist or fingers which is less accurate and needs higher mouse sensitivities than when aiming with your whole arm on top of that, which allows you to build up muscle memory much easier and better. Every person has a different dexterity level, and adjusting your mouse sensitivity to exactly that level is key in increasing your mouse accuracy and target tracking in game. Finding that specific mouse sensitivity that perfectly fits you is what this tutorial is about. The settings that work for one guy might not do it for another. Spending some time in finding your own settings is therefore in my opinion the much better way to go with than just straight up copying a configuration and mouse sensitivity from someone else. This method is called the perfect sensitivity approximation and is what most PC Pro players use to find their sensitivities. So launch your favorite game, and have your XM manager running right next to you. I will use Overwatch for this tutorial, but as I said you can do this in any other game as well. Before we jump into the game, to get the most out of this tutorial, it is very important that you have not played with your XM in the last hour or two. The reason is that you should not be warmed up or being accustomed to a certain mouse sensitivity. Otherwise, this will distort your results quite a bit. So either take a short break or do this tutorial before you start with your gaming session. So as you can see, I'm running the Overwatch test range here. The first thing you should do is to find a relatively wide and flat area with no opponents in the background, as their aim assist bubbles might distort the outcome. So custom games, empty servers, or even single player campaigns are what you might want to use for this. Once you have found a flat spot, look out for objects in the background that roughly have the size of a head. They should be on the same ground level as yourself, and also not too far away. Something like this is a perfect example, as it is exactly in the middle between up close and long distance combat. What you need to do now, is place your crosshair onto the target, and adjust your XM sensitivity, so that when you move your mouse from the very left of your mouse pad slowly to the very right you do a complete 360 degrees turn in the game. That sensitivity is your starting point, for me it's 40. So again, with that sensitivity, I do a full 360 degrees turn when I move my mouse from one side of the mouse pad to the other. Change your XM sensitivity as often as you need to in order to achieve this. The next step is to write up that 360 degrees XM sensitivity. Multiply it with 1.5, and write this value to the left side. After that, divide the 360 degrees sensitivity by 2, and write it to the right side. You then end up with three different sensitivities, in my case that's 60, 40, and 20. Now, what you do is you take each of these three sensitivities and test them back to back. Aim on the object, and try to stay on it while you do large strafe movements from the left to the right. Concentrate on your aim, and see how well you can track the object. Give every sensitivity at least a minute before changing to the next one. Here you can see me testing the highest of the three sensitivities, which is 60 in my case. As you can see, my tracking is rather shaky, it's stuttering and anything else than smooth. I am really struggling to stay on target. 
In the moments where I change my strafe movement from the left to the right my aim goes off the target. This is me testing the middle sensitivity of 40. It feels better, but I still cannot stay perfectly on target. There's less mouse stutter overall, so it's an improvement over the sensitivity from before, but it still does not let me stay on the target that consistently. As you can see, my aim is moving quite a bit within the target box, I cannot keep the crosshair perfectly still in it. Here I test the value 20, the lowest of my three sensitivities. So far, my tracking is the best with this one. The aim is relatively smooth, although this sensitivity really feels very slow to me. Normally, I would not consider to play with a sensitivity that low, but it lets me stay on target pretty easily and consistently. So now that you have tried all three sensitivities, you need to decide with which one you were able to track the target the best with. Be honest here, which one gave you the smoothest aiming? The most consistent tracking? For me it is the lowest of the three sensitivities, so 20. For you it might be a different sensitivity, like I said earlier, every person has a different level of dexterity. So this sensitivity is the starting point for the next step. If the sensitivity you picked is either the lowest or highest one of the three, you multiply that value by 1.5, and divide it by 2 again. Just like you did before. If it is the middle sensitivity, then you take the two average sensitivities between the highest and middle one, as well as the middle and lowest sensitivity. I will show you what I mean by that later. To get back to our example, I have picked the lowest sensitivity which was 20. If I multiply that with 1.5, I get a new highest sensitivity of 30, which I write to the left of it. Dividing I 20 by 2 results in 10, which is the new lowest sensitivity on the right side. So I end up with the new values, 30, 20, and 10. Just like before, I will test each of these sensitivities back to back to find out which one works best for me. This time, I start by testing the lowest sensitivity first, in my case 10. The order in which you test them does not really matter. While I walk from the left to the right, it allows me to stay perfectly on the target, there is close to no stutter at all. My mouse accuracy feels pretty decent with this one. Now let's switch to my middle sensitivity of 20. I do not feel any tracking difference to the lower sensitivity of 10 from before, as this one lets me stay on target just as well as the lower one. This is an important detail, at one point you will not feel an accuracy difference between two sensitivities anymore. Which means you should always favor the higher sensitivity of the two to maintain a competitive turn speed. Overall my tracking seems to be very consistent and fluid with this sensitivity. The highest of the three sensitivities however, which I am testing in this clip, feels less accurate. My aim with the XM sensitivity of 30 is a bit shaky, and overall, I do not feel like I can stay on target very consistently. Sometimes my aim jumps a few pixels up and down, it's nowhere near as good as the other two sensitivities. Now that you gave all of these three sensitivities a fair shot, you once again have to decide which of the three gave you the best tracking. The procedure is the same as before, if it is the left or right sensitivity, you multiply it by 1.5, and divide it by 2. If you go with the middle sensitivity, you take the average which is what I will do now. The middle and lowest sensitivity were both equal in their mouse accuracy, so I go with the higher one of the two which is 20, the one in the middle. To calculate the average, I will now add 20 and 30 together, and divide that by 2. The result is 25, which is the new value for the left side. I continue to do the same with the middle and lowest sensitivity, so 20 and 10, and will write its result to the right side. My new values are now 15, 20, and 25. As you can see, the difference between the three sensitivities gets smaller with each iteration, this means we have almost found your perfect sensitivity, as with each step the difference between them gets smaller and smaller. As before, I am testing each of those three sensitivities to determine which one gives me the best tracking and accuracy. To shorten this video, 
I will not show this anymore, but I gave each of them a minute or more to decide how well I can track the object with them. This time it was a lot tougher to decide which one worked best as they all felt almost identical. After a while I have settled for the lowest sensitivity of 15, I performed the best with it. Again, I am doing the same as I did before when I picked the highest or lowest sensitivity. If I take my value of 15, and multiply with 1.5, and divide it by 2, I receive the new sensitivities of 22.5, 15, and 7.5. After testing those, I went with the middle sensitivity, which means I once again have to calculate the average to receive the new values of 18.75, 15, and 11.25. The difference between these three XEM sensitivities is close to zero, which means we have reached the last step of our tutorial. One more time I am testing each of the three sensitivities in the very same way that I tested all the other sensitivities before. But this time, the sensitivity I pick is the final one that I will use to play with from now on. In my example, I have chosen the middle sensitivity of 15. With this sensitivity, you have the best tracking while maintaining a good turn speed. I recommend you to now test your XEM sensitivity in a few games to see how much of a difference it makes. Here you can see me trying my new sensitivity in an Overwatch custom game, that requires a lot of accuracy. Your XEM sensitivity is now optimized for your personal dexterity, and allows you to reach a much higher accuracy than with any other sensitivity. Also, this sensitivity will greatly reduce the time you need to warm up your aim. And yes, there is a high chance that this new sensitivity is way slower than what you usually play with, but that was the target of this tutorial in the first place, to show you, that the sensitivity you think suits you the best is not the same as the one you will play the best with. Pretty much all PC pros do play on very low sensitivities for a reason, if you do struggle to make a quick turn with your new sensitivity, you should consider to look into getting a larger mouse pad instead of increasing your mouse sensitivity. Give it a shot for a few days, and you will see how quickly you adapt to it. Your in-game results should soon be much better than before. Definitely let me know how it works out for you guys, I'm always interested in how you all perform with your XMs. If you liked this video hit the like button or even subscribe. Let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorials in the comments down below, and I will maybe see you in the next one. Until then, enjoy your XM.